It's the news and information you want and the hour of radio you simply can't miss. The KBOW Party Line. Today's show is brought to you by... And we welcome you to the KBOW Party Line as we are brought to you each and every weekday afternoon by the great community-minded folks at Shedhorn Sports, Butte Floral, Southwest Montana Community Health Center, Brothers Water Treatment, Century 21 Shea Realty, Tom Pump Food Stores all across Montana, Silver Bow Trophy and Engraving, Community Hospital of Anaconda, Crazy Carol's Casino, The Continental Gardens, United Way of Butte and Anaconda, Harrington Surgical Supply, Duke and Dolan Mortuary, Janelle Morgan with Century 21 Shea Realty and the Broken Arrow out in Deer Lodge bring you the Intermountain West's longest running telephone talk show, the KBOW Party Line. And we welcome you to our Wednesday, February 10th get together. Scott Perini in uh, for our own Ron Davis, who, uh, you know, I graciously gave the day off. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, give myself a gold star for that one. That's nice. <laughs> All right, but uh, we've got uh, another brown peg lunch uh, joining us from the uh, Butte Silver Bow uh, archives. We've got Kim and Janice joining us here in studio. So today we're going to be uh, talking about the daughters of the American Revolution. So, uh, Kim, uh, with that, I'll go ahead and I'll just um, throw it over to you. Well, thank you, Scott. It's so good to be here again. Um, I enjoy it. I'm going to try to uh, not make this all about me um, because this is a topic I'm very interested in. And um, pretty sure I qualify for the DAR since oh, good. we've been here since 1636 or something. <laughs> so, but like I said, it's not all about me. Um, so today we have Janice Hand, and I'm going to introduce. I'm going to let Janice introduce herself and tell us um, what your position is okay. and uh, what you do with the DAR. Be glad to. I'm Janice Hand. I'm chapter regent, so kind of think of that as, as chapter president of the Silver Bow DAR chapter. We're one of 10 chapters across the state of Montana. Um, I have been a member, well, for probably about 15 years, um, mostly due to some heavy nagging from my DAR aunt. <laughs> and, um, oh, is this the aunt that grew up in Butte? Lives Butte. here now, yes. She lives in Butte, and that's how you got uh, kind of interested in the DAR and, and yeah. Butte history and everything. So tell me, nationally, what is the DAR? What does the, the organization do? Daughters of the American Revolution was founded back in 1890, um, and it was founded as a, and is, a nonprofit, non-political women's service organization. Um, it, our mission is really threefold. Uh, we want to uh, promote patriotism. We want to promote historic preservation and also secure America's future through the education of children. So those are our, our three um, mission areas, patriotism, American history, education of children. Education. You know, it's interesting. You say founded in 1890. That was... Uh, kind of the heyday for women's clubs and yeah. club women in general. There are a lot of, uh, I don't want to call them social clubs. They were very social, but they were also very community oriented. And as I think about it, I think it was, I think it was in the 1920s that Mount Vernon, um, George Washington's home, was first preserved by the uh, Mount Vernon Ladies Association. <laughs> they were the first historic preservation group in America, and I can't help thinking that they had to have grown out of these movements, specifically like the DAR. I'm sure there were a lot of common members. You know, they they're, through their work at the DAR, I'm, I'm sure they said, ha, we have to save Mount Vernon. Well, including today. Yes. DAR is a big supporter of that, and as such, um, according to our DAR blog as of yesterday, um, we will, all of our members, and there are um, 3,000 chapters across oh. the United States with 185,000 women, all of us are allowed to be members mm -hmm. of the um, organization so that we can now log into their um, educational Nice. Thank nice. so. Yes. And actually, it's interesting you mentioned women's organizations in heyday. There's kind of a funny story. Uh, DAR was founded in 
1890, right. one year after the Sons of the American Revolution was founded. And have any of us ever heard of the Sons of the American Revolution? No. They, they <laughs> voted to exclude women, and the women uh -huh. said, okay, we'll make our own. Uh -huh. And the rest of the story is in front of you. And now, having said that, we do partner with Sons of the American Revolution. Right. Right. We had a, a joint 125th um, state meeting in Helena two years ago. And we also partner with them on a float that we're taking around the state as able um, on honoring the USS Montana submarine. Very cool. We'll get back to the Montana because I want to talk about that too. So, well, that is wonderful. So, so you have the national organization and then you have the state organization. So what does the, what does the DAR do in, in Montana? Because, you know, Montanans weren't here in 1776. Right. <laughs> but, you know, it's shocking how many of us can actually trace our lineage back to mm -hmm. someone who either... Now, to be a DAR member, you must be able to prove lineage back to the Revolutionary War. And that isn't just someone who fought. One of, one of my mm -hmm. um, ancestors under whom I came into DAR was a second lieutenant in a Virginia militia. The other one, my um, uh, other... Uh, ancestor, um, merely um, uh, vowed allegiance. Okay. So it, it, it wouldn't have to necessarily be active fighting, but if they had provided, uh, as my first one did also, mm -hmm. he provided beef and corn and, and other things okay. to the militia. Okay. So if, if you're 18 years of age and can prove lineal descent to a patriot, that's all you need to become okay. a member. Well, I'm wondering if we have some of those lineage books in our archive, because um, yeah. as you know, several years ago, I'm thinking it was just like two years ago, but it might have been five years ago. I don't remember. I didn't look at the accession number, but um, we acquired um, a lot of the DAR documents, the collection. I think your organization um, records, or maybe some of them, maybe the older yes. ones. We have scrapbooks, and I noticed we have 166 volumes called um, the DAR, the, the lineage, I can't even read it. Yeah, lineage volumes. So I might have to go down there and see how those work. Yes. And, you know, I'm wondering if, you know, that would, that would be a nice shortcut for a lot of people. It would. They wouldn't have to start from scratch to prove their their lineage. <laughs> you know? And one of our members yeah. is a longtime archives volunteer. Um, I'll tell you on the yeah. break her name. I'm sure you know her. It's She'd Joanne. Be, it is Joanne. I bet she's listening. Hi, Joanne. Yeah. <laughs> she she will be more than happy to help with that. Yes, yes. She is very active in the DAR, all kinds of things. And um, we, are, we are hoping that maybe late spring, early summer, we can start wel welcoming our volunteers back because it's, it's funny when I run into people out in public, I get so excited. It's like, <laughs> it's like seeing my crush or something, you know? It's yes. like, oh, there's Joanne, there's Mary Lou because I haven't seen them in so long and you realize how much you miss them and <laughs> Joanne was one of those, she, every Monday she comes in and she's our scanner lady. And I, I have no idea how many thousands of pages she's probably scanned for us um, uh, so that we can put things online. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, she's amazing. So I might, I might tag her to, you know, maybe on my day off I'll, I'll come in or stay late or something, have her show me how to, how to work those. So, <laughs> yeah, it's fun. So, um, so do you join at the national level? Or can you join locally? Or? What you do is you join DAR, the organization, and then um, you can be a member at large. Mm -hmm. So would um, you like maybe go online and mm -hmm. search for the DAR? DAR.org. Click org. on the membership. And, okay. it, and you can go on there and say, what does I need to be a, um, okay. a member? What they'll do is they'll get you in touch with a nearby oh. chapter oh, okay. who's got what we call a registrar. So think of that as a genealogist. Right, right. And she can sit down and help you. Uh, trace your lineage, and then get all the proper documentation. DAR has okay. always been very, very careful about who's allowed in and to make sure everything is thoroughly documented. Right, right, which makes it a very valid source um, because, boy, working in the public record, 
you realize how many mistakes there are in the public record. And I'm not talking about the spelling of your last name. You know, spelling wasn't even standardized until the 20th century. Yeah. Um, and last names change all the time. But just the fact, I'm convinced nobody really knew what their birthday was until like 1940. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> you know? Do you know what I mean? You oh, just, but I do. Yes, you, you do. Nobody really knows when it was. Um, you see their birthdays, you know, their mother might say one thing for the school record, another record might say something else, there's not a birth certificate, but maybe there's a baptism certificate, and you're like, oh, the kid's Catholic, probably about a month old, but could be a week old, who knows? <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's hard to find, but it's good to know that you all are so particular, you probably mm -hmm. only accept certain types of yes. documents. So things like what birth certificates and marriage certificates, mm -hmm. um, that sort of thing. The registrar for my own chapter here in Silverbow is also the state registrar. Oh. And Barb is an absolute wizard at squirreling into historical records and finding things that nobody thought she could find. She's helped untold wow. numbers of people get their their records in order. And she's described many a time, in fact, with my own mm -hmm. um, ancestor, there were two William Halberts mm -hmm. living mm -hmm. right at the border of Virginia. <laughs> and one of them married mm -hmm. and one of them didn't. One served under Lee, one didn't. Uh -huh. um, and so winnowing all that information out so that I am connected with the correct ancestor right. was not so easy. Right. Well, even not even going that far back, here in Butte. When I came here, it was it was such a joy having not grown up here to come back to where my grandmother was born mm -hmm. and my great grandparents immigrated. And uh, so it was a training exercise when I started the archives. I was like, well, let me let me trace my great grandfather, and only to find that there were four John Dwyers. Yeah, we were Dwyer. Whoa. And two of them were married to a woman named Mary. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and not only that, the street where they lived had changed names at one point. So all of the official records said 720 North Wyoming. And my mother and aunts kept saying, no, they'd lived on Boardman. It was 129 East Boardman. No, none of the records show that. Well, at a certain time, that whole little area up there... Um, just north of where the Kelly went in, um, was called North Wyoming. Yeah, just mm. North Wyoming. It's all up there. Oh, I see. And then they finally decided, all right, we're going to call it Agate and Ruby and, and Boardman. And I found the map that had the number striked out, stricken out, and 129 put in. And I looked at the map and thought, that's exactly what my mother described seeing. Because I was like, there was, you could see on the map, there was a, a concrete something. And mom said, yeah, when you stood on the porch, off in this direction, there was this concrete structure. And I went, all right, that I'll answers the question. So, yeah, records are just crazy. Yes. So, you know, getting them down. And I got in Butte sorting out all the Sullivans and the Harringtons and the Dwyers and oh, the no. Duffies and uh, yeah, all of them. <laughs> you know, I was so surprised. My, one of my, I think it was the second trip I made to the archives. I was looking at my grandparents who, mm -hmm. who lived in Butte. My mother, of course, was, was raised here. Um, and one of your folks took me back to this monster book that was bound in leather mm -hmm. and it showed details of house plans and streets oh, mm -hmm. and I could actually maps. see exactly yep. where my grandmother worked in a boarding house uh -huh. and where my grandfather because that's where he he lived yep. as well and then they show me the 1914 city directories which in today's world have a startling amount of personal oh, yes. information that we would never it's you know not only yeah. who are you and the normal things but how old are you were you married where you work what you where where uh -huh. did you work yes yeah, yeah. Um, and long-time listeners will recognize the Sanford maps. 
because I think I bring them up in almost every conversation. <laughs> well, they're just it's such a, a helpful tool. It is. And kind of aiding in, you know, the it, research and everything. It is. Very and so aiding. talking well, about the historical records, uh, how about if we uh, take a quick time out and then I we'll uh, come back and we'll, we'll pick up where we left off. Perfect. All right. Stay along with us and we'll return with more of your brown bag lunch uh, with the Butte Archives here on the KBOW Party Line. With cold days and long nights, winter in Montana can be tough on our mental health. Exercise, healthful eating, social support, together with practicing mindfulness and gratitude, will help us stay happy and healthy. If you are feeling down or sad, and it is interfering with your ability to enjoy life, it's time to seek professional help. Speak with your primary care provider for a referral to a counselor. For more information or to make an appointment, call Southwest Montana Community Health Center at 723-4075. Hello, Butte America. Butte Floral Leather and Luxury here. Start Valentine's Week off sending your love their favorite flowers. Share the romance with your Valentine, making them feel extra special with a delivery from Butte Floral Lather and Luxury. Call 782-6312, visit us at 1707 Continental Drive, or order online at buttefloral.com. And yes, just like Cupid, Butte Floral Lather and Luxury delivers the love. When it comes to guns and ammo, there's one place that's always got your back. Shedhorn Sports and Ennis, of course, with the best selection of firearms in Montana and a top-notch skilled professional sales staff with years of outdoor experience, Shedhorn Sports is your source for anything outdoors. You'll find all of today's top ammunition manufacturers in stock and the latest in field optics to sharpen your performance. Come to the source, Shedhorn Sports, downtown Ennis and at Shedhorn.com. And we welcome you back to the KBOW Party Line as we move through our Wednesday afternoon together. Another brown bag lunch get-together with the Butte Archives. Uh, Kim and Janice joining us here in studios. Today we're talking about the daughters of the American Revolution. And if you'd like to uh, join in or have a question or, or a comment for either of these great ladies uh, here in studio, remember uh, the party line always open to you. 494-7500, 494-7500, or pound 550 on your Verizon wireless and cell phone. So uh, with that, Kim, I'll go ahead and let you uh, continue right along. Pick it up. Up. This has been really fun and interesting, and I always think I need more than an hour for this show, Scott. <laughs> I know sometimes it's like we run out of time because we, we just have so do. much stuff to talk about. That we do. I mean, yeah. the, the archives. I mean, you before we went into the break, there I mentioning the yeah. historical documents, and you yeah. know how the registrar, uh, you know, goes through those with a mm-hmm. fine-tooth comb just to make sure mm-hmm. that uh, you know the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed to make sure everything is you know valid. Right. Right. So, so. That's one aspect of being in the DAR, mm-hmm. is having this list. So, like, statewide projects, what are some of the projects they've done? They've been doing, like, the highway markers and things yes. like that. So tell me about the highway markers. So your listeners can't see this, but I'm holding a book called Montana's DAR Markers, honoring where history was made. Um, oh, gosh, probably five, six years ago, I had questioned some of our, our members about because I'd run off across a couple markers. And I said, is there a, a, a current current record of, of markers? They said, oh, yeah, we did that not long ago. And I thought, wait a minute, I know these ladies. I said, I, exactly how long ago was that? Oh, it was in the 1980s. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So I That's said, not that long ago. uh-oh. <laughs> so at that point, it was about 35 years. Yeah. So what I did is I uh, started with a 100-year anniversary book that one of our our chapter, sorry, our state regents had compiled. And then I started researching every last one of our markers. There are 36 remaining markers, and the book is going to be updated. I wrote, I compiled all this into a book. It's got an actual Library of Congress number and everything. And I'm um, proud to announce 
that um, if you look up its its bestseller rating, if you just look in the history category, um, we're rated at, um, I believe it's number, ranked nationally, <laughs> at number 81,364. That's awesome. <laughs> because so, when you this, think of the millions of books that are probably out there, I yeah. mean, you're ranked. <laughs> yes. Isn't that a hoot? So the... So it's not to be confused. The DAR markers are. Thank you, Scott. Keeps You're welcome. Moving. <laughs> um, the DAR markers are not the old wooden highway signs that no. we sometimes see, no. and they're not the the big brown signs or anything. Correct. They are what? Tell me about them. These are typically um, engraved markers. Many of them were put in in the early 1900s when the Anaconda Company donated the materials nice. to do a, a bronze uh, plaque. Okay. The ones that have lasted are the ones where the plaque is embedded in a, gran in a, in a granite okay. monument. So there's 36 of those around. There are three here um, in Butte. Okay. The one that we're working on right now is at the Spanish-American War Veterans Cemetery, okay. which is, it's really funny. When the, the veterans bought the land, Ha dead half of it is on St. Patrick's, the other oh, is on Mount Moriah. Interesting. Yeah, so it makes it really difficult to try, because as, as we were doing the restoration of it, it was very difficult to find out who do we ask permission for. Yeah. That, that was hard. Did so, they put the Catholic veterans on one side and the no. others? So this is independently no. owned by it the was Spanish originally American Purchased veterans. by the, the Spanish American veterans. Was yes. This before the two cemeteries were put in, or was they did they just purchase it and then the cemeteries grew around? I suspect them? the latter, but I don't know. Interesting. What I what I do know is that in 1908, the Silver Bow chapter of DAR put in the very first historical marker, and it was there at that cemetery. Oh. It was put in to honor those who fought in the Spanish-American War. And this is just off the cemeteries off of Montana, right? Yes. Okay. And so at the time, not only was that an engraved granite, but they also enclosed the uh, plot with a granite coping or surround. Right. Um, and now having dug that up because it had gotten covered, so that's part of our renovation work is to uncover it and return it to where it should be. That is really a Big. Those are monster wow. deep, deep so pieces she's, of she's, granite. Uh, she's gesturing about a foot, oh, foot and a half. Probably, so, yeah. So embedded around there to to designate that. I have a feeling one of our other longtime volunteers might be working on that as well. I know she's been doing a lot of research um, at the archives and up at the mining museum into Spanish-American War. Well, because what we've done, so in, what we, we put in the very first historical marker across the state in 1908. In 1999, because that one was becoming unreadable, we put an, a new one up. And the wording okay. changed a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and, and at that time, um, what we had wanted to do was make sure that that area had stayed in good shape, which is what brought us to about two years ago when we started raising money to, to basically mm -hmm. restore it. Part of the restoration is adding to it. We're adding a metal um, box that will withstand the weather, and in it is contained a brief bio of each one of the 77, that's 78, that's arguable, yeah. veterans buried there. Wow. And so our, our member Jennifer, who is a wizard at historical mm -hmm. research, mm -hmm. has been making sure that we've got good, accurate information and a map so that somebody could go find oh, where that particular person is buried. Right. It's so interesting. So interesting. That is, that's wonderful. So, so you've got that. And you mentioned, okay, you mentioned that one. There were two mm -hmm. more in Silverbow County. What yes. are the other two markers? Um, there is a marker, again, the bronze anaconda uh, mm -hmm. plaque embedded in mm -hmm. um, a, a boulder at Nistler at mm -hmm. Paydirt. And that basically, that was the first time that Paydirt, pay dirt. valuable enough to be mined, right. um, I think it was silver at the time, yeah. was, was found. The other marker is a demarcation on Park Street of our founder's house. Uh, oh. Specifically, that's 832 West Park Street. Hmm. Now, that's a National Historic Register site, and it was the home of Jenny Stillwell Talent, who founded um, the first chapter of, of Montana DAR. Okay. And she hosted the first um, uh, state conference there. 
there are other stories you could read in, in old newspapers about her doing entertaining. And this is a very small house. How they got that many people in there, I don't know. <laughs> but one of the things that we still giggle about in my chapter is that they were using the words when they talked about the decor. They served delicate refreshments. Oh, delicate refreshments. Yeah. Or dainty, dainty refreshments. And yes. D- yes, probably petty fours and lemonade. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yes. And they went into such detail in, in the old oh newspaper articles. I mean, it, it, everything from like what was on the table to what type of flowers to uh, what, the what color the tablecloth wore. <laughs> oh, the tablecloth wore. Yes. Yes. That is what makes those old newspaper articles so fun to read. Yes. You can feel like you're there. Yes. They, they paint a very vivid picture. <laughs> Theater of the mind. Yes. 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 Definitely. So. Um, and I'm trying to think, I'm trying to read my, my list of what else we do. So we've got the, and the marker out at Nistler, I should say, how do you, how do you get there? Do you take the I-15 and then don't you take that first little exit and kind mm-hmm. of wander around? It's right by the creek, right? Yeah, it's right next to the road. Um, you can kind of see, oh, you know what? I've seen it from the, um, yeah, the, uh. It's right on Silver Silver Bow Creek. Yeah, it's it's so. near Silver Bow Creek, yeah. off the, the Butte road. Anaconda Highway. Yeah, which is kind of the front the frontage road, road down there between between Butte and Ramsey. I've driven by it, uh, you know, a handful of times. And you, you kind yeah. of forget that it's there until yeah. until you see and it. You see it, and you go, "Oh, wow!" And I'm I'm one of those. I drive my children crazy if there's any sort of historic marker. We're pulling over. Um, the upside of that is when I have friends from the east come and visit me they are so into that so i'll be like hey historic mark i love that the state was like hey there's a historic site coming up are we stopping oh yeah oh yeah so oh yeah we always well, stop. you know you should know so this fun. and your and your listeners should yeah. as well this montana's dar markers book is freely available Good. on the D- Montana D-A-R dot org website. All right. And as soon as I get the third edition done, because we've had we've mm-hmm. had two more markers, and actually some of our Bannock D-A-R ban- old old Bannock mm-hmm. sign uh, have been found. So I'm updating the book. It's edition three now. Nice. To include those. Nice. Yeah. And give me the website again. It's Montana D-A-R dot org. org. Okay. And will that be available at any of the bookstores here in in town? Um, the book itself is available at the Montana Historic Society. Okay. Um, we basically published it to make sure we had a, a, a solid and long-lasting record. Foundation. Right. But, but not necessarily to make money. I mean, I think the thing is for sale is $15, and we get itty-bitty, teeny-tiny uh, royalty <laughs> checks Little from checks the online <laughs> publisher. <laughs> They're hardly enough to write yeah. a check for it, but... And I think we have a copy in our collection. I don't do. know if it's in our library or in the collection. I didn't. I didn't look that closely at the record. I just recognized the cover and went, "Oh wait, I think we have that." So we gave a copy yeah. of the book, at least edition two, to each of the um, towns or historic sites, or like Pompey's Pillar. The right. the uh, rangers there have a copy. Bannock has a copy. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we did try to make probably, it available. Does our public library probably have one. I don't know. They might. We should look. Somebody go out there and check the catalog. Yeah. Call in and let us know. <laughs> so are we ready for another break yet? We, we could. Okay. I, I was just going to ask a, another question. I was just, oh, just going to chime yeah. in to see. So what were the years that the other two markers went in? You said the first one for the Spanish and for the Spanish American that was out there in the cemetery was 1908. So yes. the, the Nistler Junction one, when, when was that one? Let's see. I think that's the one I, I used the picture for in our publicity on that one. I think that was the one. Um, the pay gold one, yeah. that was put in August 24th, 1931. And what's interesting about that one is that we had uh, national officers come to the state conference to do the, help with the dedication of this in the, in the early 30s. And historic record isn't clear because it was August. They either met there to do the ceremony at 6.30 a.m. or 7.30 a.m. And I have an equal number of sources each saying the same oh thing, gosh. so you decide. Oh, my goodness. Um, the other Founders House, that one was installed October 2008. Oh. 2006. 06. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Interesting. Well, all right. Well, how about if we take another quick time out, and then we'll uh, come back. Yeah. Sounds All right, good. Kim and Janice joining us here in studio at Brown Bag Lunch with uh, the Butte Archives here on the KBOW Party Line. Stay along with us here on your hometown station.
Some of the best water treatment, softeners, and filters, Brothers Water Treatment and Pump Service offers water well pump installation to residents in Butte and surrounding area. From frost-free hydrants, pressure tanks, on-demand pumps, and regular maintenance, Brothers Water Treatment provides timely service to each customer. With over 40 years water experience, choose Brothers Water Treatment and Pump Service. Free bids available, call 559-0261. Brothers Water Treatment and Pump Service, owned and operated by Wayne Brothers. Hi, this is Jennifer Shea with Century 21 Shea Realty in Butte. Well, Valentine's Day is upon us, and home is where the heart is. Call us today and let one of our real estate professionals at Century 21 Shea Realty assist you in finding your way home in Montana. We have offices in Butte, Anaconda, Great Falls, and Bozeman, with information on hundreds of homes throughout Montana. So call us today, 406-723-5455. Gary and Jennifer Shea, broker owners. Century 21 Shea Realty, independently owned and operated. Silverboat Trophy and Engraving hopes your team wins. Whether it's your favorite professional football team playing in Super Bowl 55, it's your college alma mater or your local high school or elementary team, remember when you want quality, handcrafted and customized sports awards for any sporting event, run it to the end zone and make it a touchdown with the best of the best. Silverboat Trophy and Engraving, 500 East 3rd Street in Butte or call 782-5725. No matter how far you may go, there's always one just down the road. Down pump, who pump it up? Pump it up. Does an ice cold beer and a snack sound good? Right now at Town Pump, Blue Moon 15 pack cans are only $15.99. In the deli, try out tornadoes, two for $3. Town Pump, your hometown convenience store. And there's one right down the road from you. Town pump. Right down the road. Pump it up. Oh, yeah. And we welcome you back to the KBOW Party Line as we move through our Wednesday afternoon together, 38 minutes after 1 o'clock. We've got Kim and Janice joining us here in studio. Another Butte Archives Brown Bag Lunch talking the daughters of the American Revolution as we continue along yes. on this Wednesday afternoon. Uh, not only am I learning a lot, but I'm sure our listeners out there are learning a lot as well. So I'm, I'm enjoying this conversation, ladies. Yeah, it's I am having a blast. <laughs> I am having a lot of fun. I want to just take her back to work with me. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I don't know. Many hands make light work That's yes right um so i want to kind of shift focus and talk a little bit about historic preservation because that is very near and dear to my heart mm -hmm. my um bachelor's degree is in historic preservation from virginia actually from um mary washington in virginia oh. so that's that's how i ended up at the archives i kind of focused on research and documentation and did a lot of national register work so oh, wow yeah uh historic preservation is is um a huge passion of of mine and the the dar is very involved in historic preservation and two of the states very early early settlement sites white settlement sites have been preserved so do you want to tell me about um bannock i'd love to so most people living in Butte have probably been to Bannock, and if you haven't been, uh, definitely go. It's and a go fascinating in the place. Go in the winter. It is the most peaceful, mm. serene place in the winter. Oh, I just love it. Yeah, and you still get Sorry. a good feel of, of what it was like. You do. But, you know, I'll bet what most people don't know is that Bannock exists now as a state park because our DAR member, Elfrida Wedside, and her chapter stepped in when they realized that Bannock was going to be sold off and, and lost. Mm -hmm. And so there's a very funny story, and I, I can't confirm for sure, but <laughs> it's written enough that I, I think it's probably true. Um, Elfrida's husband, what must have been a very um, uh, supportive kind of guy, uh, because it, it showed he got involved quite a bit with her uh, in her DAR activities, but he comes home one day and she says, well, dear... Um, I went down to the bank to our friend, whoever, and I bought, I borrowed $5,000 and I bought Bannock today. <laughs> and the poor guy. So what happened was, though, she did buy it to make sure that mm -hmm. it, it was not lost. Um, they, uh, she and a lot of volunteers 
basically uh, restored the church there, which had, the roof had fallen in, and, and there was wow. debris to be shoveled out. Mm -hmm. and, and so they made sure along the way that that was all protected. And then they picked on the legislature until the legislature agreed to make it into a state park. When did it become a state park? Do you know? Oh, good question. I don't. I, should I know, know just this. right you where to look. Well? I should know it, but I, I can't recall <laughs> the top think, of my head. I, th I think with, with people who are into history, we know so much that we just can't get to that file that's in our brains. Yes. But um, I don't know if it was, you know, I'm thinking 60s maybe, 50s. I don't remember. But, well, that uh, is documented in the book. And so, see, I've grabbed the book. She's got the book. And I can tell you that our marker was installed in September of 1925. Oh, goodness. And uh, it was 1953 that Mrs. Woodside decided Bought. to purchase. Okay. And then, um, in the following year, donated it to the state of Montana. Okay. She subsequently sparked campaigns that resulted in Bannock being designated a National Historic Landmark right. and later a state park. And so it was 1962 okay. that she chaired the 100th anniversary of the Bannock mm -hmm. Centennial Celebration for the Discovery of Gold. Cool. Cool. Well, Bannock is one of my favorite places to bring my children. And anybody who visits me, we always have to go to Bannock and they always have to sit there. My family stories about this is where my pioneer grandfather came in great 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 grandfather and um, I think my his daughter was the first Episcopal baby baptized in the territory oh, <laughs> neat. so we have a lot of really cool history and uh, so tell me about the other great site that was saved a little that, north of us. that was in Fort Benton mm -hmm. there was a fort there the Fort Benton Fort Blockhouse mm -hmm. uh, was b barely hanging on um, because they'd made it out of adobe, basically. Um, okay. When they decided to build in Montana, all of us know, don't do that. But at that time, they, you know, the, the builders didn't. So it was deteriorating badly. Um, and what happened was some of the local ladies, who were also uh, DAR, said, you know, this, this isn't going to work. We've got we've to do something with this. So speaking of, of people who, who picked on the legislature... <laughs> and made them do the right thing. Um, the the Fort Benton Blockhouse, um, we installed a recent marker there, August 2019. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and what that does is it, it, told, it tells the story of the settlement around the old fort, and after it had been deemed um, unnecessary anymore, it, it was deserted. Um, but... They started about 1907 when the ladies got the 10th Montana legislature to appropriate $800 for the fort's restoration. And so a couple of the ladies were appointed as uh, trustees to make, to make that happen. Um, DAR actually held title to that for a number of years before turning it over to the, um, to the state of Montana. Um, and one of the funny th things is that DAR is because it's very well organized. Um, they they had lots of active support from Fort Benton women, and they formed a ladies improvement society. Seventy three ladies. They had four committees. Those are the committee on fencing, the committee on hall, the committee on lawn, and the committee on entertainment. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be on the fencing committee. Yeah. <laughs> that is wonderful and. So very organized. Yes, yes. Women's club like to uh, like to form committees. Yes, but I tell you that and serve they dainty refreshments and, and serve dainty refreshments. But boy, did they get things done. Um, and of course, these are you know the days before women went to work or were even allowed to go to work. Um, I, I I don't think people realize how how much we have now. Because of these women's clubs, yes, um, how much they actually did behind the scenes, um, especially in the field of history and historic preservation, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I think also people here. This kind of a, uh, I know we've got fifteen more minutes. I don't want to say in conclusion, but um, to reinforce when people hear D A R and Daughters of the American Revolution, and they hear it out here, uh, and yeah. they go. 
what? You know, yeah. there's no American Revolution. You know, the activities are just so important that you all do mm-hmm. in, in historic preservation and uh, in history. And now what about education? You talked about children's education. Um, so what do you do there? Is it there like an essay contest or something? Yeah, we have actually two essay contests. Okay. Um, one is the American History Essay Contest, which is um, held every year. We invite uh, school kids to participate, and we, we have a contest, and, and we make mm-hmm. awards. Uh, the most recent American History Essay Contest, uh, the topic was the Boston Massacre. Mm-hmm. So the kids do research and, mm-hmm. and, and write that up. And that's for 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. Okay. Then we have a Good Citizens um, award designation, and that's for graduating high school seniors. Um, th- the, each school names a good citizen based on the, the criteria of being involved in the school, the community, being helpful, you know, all the normal good citizen things. But then we offer them, the, 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 each high school's winner, the opportunity to write an essay. That then gives them a, a small scholarship from the Silver Bow chapter, puts them up for a larger uh, essay uh, uh, for against other Montana chapters, and if the Montana winner then is involved, goes to national, okay. and so they have interesting uh, things too. The most recent one for the Good Citizen contest was, how do the combined actions of so many good citizens keep our nation moving forward? Wow, that's a loaded topic. Yes. Today especially. <laughs> well, my actually my favorite one was a couple years ago when the topic was women's suffrage. Uh-huh. And one of these young people wrote an essay from the standpoint of the family dog who was watching all the women parading and what was happening. Oh, how it was so oh. innovative. Just wonderful. Oh, that is wonderful. Um, and that's another thing that probably grew out of these organizations like the DAR clubs like that um, I would I would hope they would well they were not political though right so they probably didn't take an official stance on suffrage or or not but I am willing to bet that a lot of their members were suffragists <laughs> what well, one would assume it, yes. it's hard not to be um, involved in your community and not it not be yeah um, you know part of the League of Women Voters mm-hmm. You know, that's not necessarily political one way or the other. It's just women who are encouraging other women to register. That's how it started anyway, yeah. to be involved. So um, and other something else I said we'd touch back on this is um, the USS Montana. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's been fun. I could tell. She's, she was like, oh, look at this. There was something out in your lobby that you uh, supported and oh. she pointed yeah. that out. Yeah, you've got a supporter mm-hmm. uh, sticker yeah. out there. That we do, yes. yes. I know Ron was involved and the radio stations were involved with that. And So tell us about the USS Montana, oh, what it that is was and, such and the DAR's involvement. It was such a toot. Um, I got into a, just a general chat with, with an SAR member out of Dillon and he mentioned that the Sons of the American Revolution, SAR, uh, was thinking about fielding a, a, a float. And, you know, the thing that they were trying to figure out is is gee I wonder if it could be that this new thing coming up this is the second only the second Navy vessel ever named for our state USS mm-hmm. Montana the first was a World War one um, I'm gonna call it a destroyer I have been corrected by the Navy guys apparently there's another name for it <laughs> <laughs> um, but a w- nice size ship oh yes <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah substantial <laughs> and so um, we, it, it, the discussion went on, and we finally said, well, you know what? Somebody had seen a, a mock-up of the actual USS Montana, which is a, a Virginia-class submarine, uh, nuclear, um, it, absolutely the latest technology, stealth. They can pretty much do everything. Um, in fact, the, 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 the uh, Navy sent its crew to various trips to Montana to, to understand Montana, to meet to meet Mm -hmm. the citizens. Mm -hmm. And the crew came up with the slogan, Vigilantes of the Deep. Oh, that's wonderful. Isn't that neat? So we decided to do a float. And of course, they're SAR, so they were just going to put this cut out of a submarine on a flatbed. And we DAR said, "Uh uh-uh. So we got bunting, we got flags, uh-huh. <laughs> we got all the, you know, the, 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 the things like, like that. And so, of course, COVID hit. But we did get the, the float went to the Big Timber 
um, in June for, um, they have a, a big event then. And then we did make it to the Dillon Labor Day Parade oh, as good. well. Oh, good. And well, so maybe this year we oh, able to, to We hope so. Out. So, yeah. so this rings a bell. It seems maybe Joanne told me about this or somebody said. So this ship has been recently... Um, christened christened right but not launched yet it hasn't been launched but uh, maybe it was ron that was somebody was telling me about shipping pasties to the crew so that their first meal does this ring a bell no i didn't know I that somebody wanted to ship pasties to the crew so their first I believe it meal was ron. maybe it was ron on this show maybe Talking oh. about shipping I'm kind of having a flashback. Are you having a flashback too? All right, I'm oh, not crazy. Can, can you imagine though the debate about where to get the pasties? Oh dear. And I maybe don't. maybe just send you know buy them from everybody, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then sent them all to the crew, so that or was it the Montana or was it the USS Butte? No, it was the Montana. The USS Butte is a is a Vietnam ship. Um, so wouldn't that be so wonderful? One of the funny stories is when we took that float over to Big Timber. At the end of the parade, we're in the high school parking lot tearing it down. Right. And this guy comes beating feet up, um, and he says, can I get some pictures? And we said, well, sure. Here, we'll move out of your way and mm -hmm. take all you want. Turns out his son is will be serving on the USS <gasps> Montana. Oh, that's exciting. There's another Montana in there, and he's from Missoula, I believe. So there's at least two Montana boys <gasps> on the crew. On the Montana. Yeah. That and so is the, awesome. The, 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 the man whose, whose son was serving is serving there took pictures, and then all of a sudden, the cousins and the aunts and the grandparents Everybody came up, and we there. had a grand picture taking. Oh. Well, and by the way, one other little teeny thing on that USS Montana, we have a, a, a sandwich board on the float that has a poster, because did you know that there was a submarine in the Revolutionary War? I think The I USS Turtle. That. The Turtle. Yeah, <laughs> a little wooden <laughs> sphere that scientists have looked at and said, you know, the, the guy doing it, because it would have been powered by paddles, almost Wasn't like a, yeah. a bicycle or something, yeah. said he would have been so exhausted by the time he got anywhere near that British ship that there was no way he was going <laughs> to hurt it. But <laughs> we do have a Revolutionary War oh. connection. Oh, that is too funny. Well, how about if we take uh, one more quick time out? We'll come back and we'll wrap things up. Okay, sounds All good. All right, stay along with us, and we'll be back with more of your KBOW Party Line here in just a moment. A mission, a goal, a constant reminder that when we reach out a hand to one, we influence the condition of all. We build the strength of our neighborhoods, we bolster the health of our communities, and we change the lives of those who walk by us every day. Give, advocate, volunteer with United Way of Butte and Anaconda. For more information, call 406-782-1255 or email Director at bresnan.net today. United, we lift up our communities. When it comes to women's health, the team at Community Hospital of Anaconda delivers. Together, Dr. Glenn McLaughlin, Dr. Andrew Bognano, and Dr. Sildi Adelano provide the region's leading women's health and surgical services. Let the Community Hospital of Anaconda be your choice for your health. To learn more about their personalized services, visit communityhospitalofanaconda.org or you can call 563-8500. The Community Hospital of Anaconda, care for a lifetime. There's always fun in motion at the Big Red Barn. Old-fashioned service, that's what sets us apart. Where you can win and laugh out loud. The hokey pokey is what it's all about. Where neighborhood people have good old-fashioned fun. There's always something here for everyone. Everybody knows. Life is about feeling safe, cared for, and comfortable. And when you're older, these elements are key. That's why people choose the Continental Gardens in Butte. If you're 62 or older and living on a fixed income, apply today by calling 533-0705. This is Christine. All of our apartments are on one level. We are close to transportation and walking trails, and we are pet friendly. Call the Continental Gardens and get on our waiting list today, 533-0705. The Continental Gardens, 100 Gardens Way in Butte.
And we welcome you back to the KBOW Party Line as we wrap up our brown bag lunch day with the Butte Archives. Kim and Janice joining us here in studio as we've been talking about the Daughters of the American Revolution. And we've really gotten deep into the conversation. And, you know, the time just flew by this last half. So it as we has. wrap things up, Kim, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, send yeah. it over to you. Yeah, thanks. Well, I know Scott and I have both learned a lot. And I mean, that he I and have. I both, he has done a lot of his own family history here in Butte, as our listeners know. And um, and I've done a lot of his family history. No, I haven't. Um, I do other people's family history as well. So I know the challenges of, um, of documenting that. Um, but I'm really um, excited to, to learn about some of the other projects that the DAR does. It, it is more of, about service and yes. um, helping your community and, like you said, scholarships for children mm-hmm. and historic preservation. And tell us one more time, does the state have its own website or should they go to the national um, state, DAR? State has its own, okay, Montana, so Montana DAR. Dot org. Montana D-A-R dot org. And from that, Good. you can see where all of our 10 chapters are. We mm-hmm. go from St. Ignatius to Missoula and from Glendive to Kalispell. Mm-hmm. So we've got 10, ten chapters across ten the chapters. state. Each one of them does their service projects according to what their own community needs. For example, one of our mm-hmm. service projects will be assisting as we can with the veterans at the New Southwest Montana Veterans Home. Okay. I'll be talking with some folks there about um, providing some things um, for them. We, For one thing, mm-hmm. uh, for both there and the Butte Rescue Mission, uh, we've purchased for them a subscription to our Day Our Magazine, mm-hmm. which is a fabulous magazine with historic information, mm-hmm. lots of pictures. Um, it's, it's, it's American Spirit is its, its name, and okay. it is a just a joy to read. So anybody who's even remotely interested in history, I think is going to enjoy reading that. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And that was that, again, I, I, we didn't even talk about what the local projects were. So yeah. I'm glad that you have, you have uh, told us that. And for anybody interested, um, we have uh, a large DAR collection. We have a lot of scrapbooks that go from 1963 to 2011. Um, so if you think your your mother or grandmother might have been involved in there, we could pull those out. We have lineage books, which I'd love to get into. And uh, uh, we also have a lot of the documents that you'll need to prove at least the beginning part of the last 100 years, I guess the start of your family history before... Um, before going back to the previous hundred years to the revolutionary yeah. period. but um, I was part yeah. of the group who came to the archives to sort through all those records and try to consolidate yes. them. You'll be yes. pleased to know that instead of great big loose leaf binders for our yearbook, our record of what our chapter's mm-hmm. done, it, it's now a, a half inch thick, nice. um, I think it's Shutterfly yes. uh, compilation, much nicer to store. Oh, very, very good. Nice. Very nice. Well, good. Thank you very much, ladies, for joining us uh, yes. here in studio, the Daughters of the American Revolution. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Janice. And we're officially out of time, so we thank are. you for we'll being you next with month. us today here on the, yeah, we'll be here. All and right. I thank you. Thank you. And with that, our party line in the books, we thank you for being along with us. A lifetime of love, you lived a lifetime of love. Often the loss of a loved one is when you realize how special they were. I could never imagine life without mom. Now I want to say thank you. Honoring the times of our lives, it would be our privilege to serve your family. The lifetime of love. Memories of a Lifetime of Love, Dugan Dolan Mortuary, We Care, at 1805 Meadowlark, 723-3239. Experience excellence with Harrington Surgical Supply. If you or a loved one or family member is currently rehabilitating at home, Harrington's offers equipment rentals like lift chairs and wheelchairs, walkers, commodes, and more, making it even easier for those who need in-home medical equipment on short-term or temporary basis. See Harrington Surgical Supply at 53 East Broadway in historic Uptown Butte or call 723-6541. Proudly serving Butte in southwestern Montana since 1946. Real estate is an asset, ever increasing in value. It's the most solid security you can have. Janelle Morgan, real estate agent with Century 21 Shea Realty, is ready to help you with your investment. Every day, you'll have opportunities to take chances to work outside your safety net. When you take risks, you want someone beside you helping you with every step of the way. That agent is Janelle Morgan with Century 21 Shea Realty in Butte. 
Call Janelle at 490-7945. The best investment on earth is earth. The best steaks come from the heart of Montana and cattle country in our area that's Deer Lodge, Montana and the Broken Arrow Steakhouse and Casino where the steaks are cut fresh and never frozen. Your steak dinner always comes with all the fixins. They have other great options on their menu too and feature prime rib on Friday and Saturday nights. Check out sports betting while you're in. Take the short drive to Deer Lodge, Montana, Main Street and the Broken Arrow Steakhouse and Casino. KBOW Butte.